Techniek is, uh, staat voor niks, hè? Goed. Uh, next speaker, Peter, about the binary analysis tool. I think the Swiss army knife for a lot of uh, engineers when you need to well, develop stuff or analyze stuff. A binary, binary analysis tool is very useful. So I'm looking forward to uh, see your presentation. Good mm -hmm. luck. Thank you. Yep. Thanks for introducing me. Hi, everybody. Welcome to my presentation on binary analysis tools. Thanks for coming. My name is Petr, <laughs> yeah, and I'm a developer and admin of an open source tool, a parser generator called Kite Struct. We will start with uh, some light introduction to binary formats. What, what is the difference uh, between binary and text files? And we will look at the structure of binary formats. In the next part, I will focus on binary analysis. What are the ways to get a parser and what is serialization? In the third part, I will introduce Kite struct, the, uh, which is the main reason I'm here. I'll follow up with some other other tools useful that mainly those that Kite collaborates with or those I find interesting. So binary formats, what are they? We, from the computer's perspective, we uh, all files can be viewed as as binary because all files are fundamentally stored just as a sequence of zeros and ones. However, it's common to distinguish between text files and binary files. How are they different? So a text file is uh, made up of characters. It's divided into lines, which are sequences of printable and white space characters, such as uh, spaces or tabs, terminated by a line break marker, which can be the line feed character, carriage return, or a combination of both. A text file is readable and uh, easy to edit in plain text editors, such as Notepad, VS Code, Vim, and others. Uh, text files can also be recognized by their extension, the most common being TXT, RTF, CSV, JSON, or XML. Although we only work with characters in text files, um, eventually they must be encoded into some binary form. So all characters must be assigned some binary representation according to a certain character sets. There are many character sets. The most common or the most widespread standard is the 7-bit. ASCII table, which covers 128 <laughs> characters, but of course this wasn't enough for all possible national alphabets, so many extensions were created. Today, UTF-8 is widely used. So how is a binary file different? The basic unit of a binary file is a byte, which is an 8-bit binary number. Binary file is a sequence of bytes from beginning to end. It's not fully readable in a plain text editor because it often contains bytes which do not correspond to any displayable character. A binary file can be, for example, an image, video, font, database, an archive, or executable code. To work with a binary format, we need to use an application that can work with the given format. And unlike, uh, unlike text files, where numerical values must be encoded into ASCII characters, in binary files, numbers are most often stored in the same form in which the processor works with them. <coughs> there are many binary formats. And unfortunately, they are, not, uh, cr they are not designed according to a common template. But usually, the contents of a binary file can be separated into a header and the data itself. The header contains so-called metadata. Metadata is information necessary to read or properly understand the data itself. How 
uh, binary format. So how a GIF binary file can look like, I will show on arguably the smallest one pixel GIF, uh, GIF image. The file length is 35 bytes. You may think uh, 35 bytes is a lot for one pixel of information, but for example, the smallest one pixel image in the PNG format uh, is 67 bytes in size. So how does the GIF format look like? The first three bytes are always the ASCII string GIF. The next three bytes specify the version of the format, in this case, the ASCII string 89A. There is also an older version, 87A. The next four bytes specify the width and height of the logical screen. Note that the width is, is written uh, at positions 6 and 7 using bytes 0, 1, 0, 0 in hexadecimal. Uh, the GIF format writes multi-byte numbers in the little endian order. Next is the global color table, which is optional, but if it's not there, the file won't be readable in some graphics editors. The global color table is followed by the, by the image data, and the entire file ends with a terminating semicolon, which is 3B in hexadecimal. And this byte crunching we've done here is the essence of parsing a binary file. So, parsing means that we read the, read the bytes from a binary file, determine the meaning of the bytes, and create an object tree you see below in a higher programming language. The opposite direction is serialization, where we create or change a binary file contents according to the object tree. There are basically four ways to get a parser. The most convenient way is to use a ready-made library for parsing the given format in your language. It will have a user-friendly API and it can be optimized for the format. However, it is sometimes of poor quality and it can be or, or incomplete and it can be difficult to debug and fix. Moreover, for the most common formats like JPEG, ZIP, or ELF, there are, there are, you, you, can, you can probably find even several libraries to choose from in your language. But for uh, less, less common and obscure formats, there probably won't be a library in your language. Another option is to write your own parser. In my experience, this is the worst option. I tried it myself uh, before, I, before I knew about Kite Extract. I wanted to parse uh, some font 2 format files in JavaScript. Some font 2 is a soundbank format for playing uh, MIDI files. But I couldn't find a JavaScript library that would work for me, so I started writing my own parser. And it was a huge task with a lot of difficult debugging and dumping. In addition, if you have already written a parser in Python, for example, and then after some time you are asked to create a Java parser of the same format, you have to write and debug everything again. A little better is to use a parser combinator. Basically, we still write our own parser in our programming language, but using building blocks from a library. There are many parser combinators, perhaps even dozens in popular languages. Uh, one, most, uh, one, one popular combinator in Python is construct, then for example, binary parser in JavaScript, and uh, bin data in Ruby. However, uh, as with the previous two options, there is still the disadvantage of 
being bound to a particular language. So the parser is not portable to other programming languages. And it can be even tied to the application for which it was originally written. For example, a, the graphics editor. The fourth option is to use a parser generator. We no longer write parsing code directly in our programming language. Instead, we use, uh, we describe the format in a domain-specific language or, or the format structure. And uh, the domain-specific language is a language uh, designed only for a certain purpose, here for the description of binary formats. So it's not a universal language like Python, for example. And the format description in this domain-specific language can then be automatically translated into a parser. This group includes Kite struct and then, for example, also Spicy, Everparse, or Apache Defodil. The Kite struct language is designed uh, so that the Kite struct language is designed to be independent of both the application and the programming language. This ensures its wide applicability. I found this. Uh, chart on the internet. It compares the speeds of Python combinators with the Kite struct parser generator when processing network packets. Parser generators are generally faster than combinators because the format structure is interpreted only once already at compile time when the, when the parser source code is generated. In contrast, Combinators, at least in dynamically typed languages, must typically examine the format structure at runtime, which slows down processing speed. Uh, this chart is of an older date. Maybe the ratios would be a little different today. Uh, the developer of Construct is Arek Bulski. He's also a member of the Kitai team. He takes care of, uh, of the connection with Construct. He was unhappy that the that Construct was this slow, and he tried to improve, improve its speed. I think he partially succeeded, but uh, in principle, generators will probably always be faster than combinators. We are getting to the Kitai struct tool itself, which I'm involved in developing. This is the homepage of the project at kitai.io. What is Kitai struct? It is mainly a parser generator for 11 programming languages. You can see their logos at the bottom of the slide. Kitai is not limited to programming languages, though. It can also generate code for other parsing libraries or frameworks. For example, we have a target for the aforementioned construct library in Python. Another, uh, a new target language, uh, or a new target, awkward arrays, has recently been developed, but it's not yet merged upstream. It was uh, created uh, in as part of an astrophysics project uh, of several American universities. And this project, this project uh, focuses on analyzing data from dark matter detectors. KTA can also serialize in two languages, Java and Python. It is based on the declarative language KTA struct YAML with the KSY extension, which can be used to describe arbitrary binary formats. A little history of Kite struct. So the author of the project is Michael Yakshin, who has been working for a long time in, at Microsoft in Dublin. The project was created in 2014 and was originally intended for reverse engineering hardware protocols of aquarium controllers. In 2016, 
uh, these questions at the end, yeah, it, <laughs> it will be easier for me. Uh, so in 2016, uh, Michael decided to release the project as open source. At the time, only Java and Ruby were supported. In 2017, he presented uh, Kite Struct at FOSDEM. At the time, uh, eight languages were supported and the project had 400 stars on GitHub. Currently, uh, Kite Struct supports 11 languages, has over 3,600 3, <laughs> uh, 3, uh, stargazers on GitHub and is used in more than 600 GitHub projects. When I look at them, I'm always amazed at how creatively Kaitai can be used. I joined Kaitai development, or uh, uh, also this February, at the FOSDEM conference in Brussels, I presented a new extension, serialization in Java and Python. I joined Kaitai development in 2019 after trying to write uh, my, own, my own parser for the SF2 format, as I already mentioned. And uh, I was excited when I discovered Kite Struct. It has a universal concept. It is widely uh, applicable, easily extensible to new target languages, yet easy to understand. I started contributing a lot. And uh, at the time of COVID, when we had to stay at home, I could devote all day to Kaitai. Thanks to that, I got into it quickly. And in 2020, I received an offer from Michael to become a project admin. Being a Kaitai admin requires knowledge not only of binary formats and the KSY language, but I must also be familiar with the 14 programming languages which are used in Kaitai. Last year, I received a grant from the Dutch foundation Analet, which, which distributes uh, money from European funds to support open source projects. Uh, I, I got it for, for the ser serialization in Java and Python, and finished it in March this year. Uh, I received another grant this, this summer. It includes, several, uh, it includes improvements to several components and also the addition of Rust as a parsing target. You may be surprised why Ru uh, that Rust is still missing from the supported languages. The reason is that uh, Rust is designed to be reliable and safe, and uh, therefore, it's, uh, it's much more strict and complex than other languages. So adding Rust is, will be uh, much more difficult than to add uh, other languages. Uh, speaking of the future, works, work is also underway to add Julia as a parsing target. Now I will show you how to work with Kaitai. The first stage is compilation. On the left, we have an example of the Kaitai struct specification or format description. The format described here has only one attribute named one of type one, ty uh, of type one byte unsigned integer. We, we compile this specification using the Kaitai struct compiler as output we get the source code of the parser. The main stage is parsing. We give a binary file to the generated parser as input and receive the parse data as output. The Kaitai struct parser <coughs> works with the runtime library, which we need to include to our application. Why use Kaitai? What are the advantages? One advantage is that you only need to write the specification once and you can use it everywhere. 
it standardizes the way we describe binary, binary formats. Many formats have already been described in the Kite Struct Format Gallery. A described format can also be visualized in a Gravis diagram. The case why language is simple, as you will see in a moment. Kite supports serialization in Java and Python. Uh, several hundred tests were written to ensure the correct function functionality of the generated parsers in all languages. You can use any of the available visualization tools to inspect binary files. To make, uh, so there are also many packages for various platforms and programming languages to make the installation of Kaitai easier. I will discuss all of these uh, features on the following slides. So the big advantage is that you get uh, parsers in 11 programming languages for free from a single Kaitai specification. <coughs> Here for demonstration, I've had the compiler generate uh, Java, Python, and Ruby parsers from a simple KSY specification you see on the left. When we look at official format uh, specifications, we find out that each one looks different. There is no single standard for documenting formats. Kaita is mainly used for creating parsers, but some users write KSY specifications just to document a format in an easy to understand way. You don't even have to be a programmer to understand a KSY specification. And it's often easier than trying to read these long um, original format specifications in multi-page PDF documents. The Kaitai project uh, comes with an extensive gallery of uh, described formats. There are already 185 of them by 81 contributors. Several hundred more are in various open source projects on GitHub. The Kaitai Struct Format Gallery includes formats of various kinds, for example, archive files, executables, file systems, game files, multimedia files, or network protocols. This suggests the wide applicability of Kaitai. It's, used, it's being used not only for reverse engineering, and uh, not only for reverse engineering, but also for forensic analysis, decoding satellite packets, uh, malware detection, analyzing network traffic, and many other things. <coughs> it, su uh, it suggests a uh, use for an international database of formats where various obscure and historical formats can be described for future preservation. The fact that the Kaitai struct language is declarative makes it possible to automatically visualize any described format in a Gravis diagram. The KSY language is simple but powerful. It can describe pretty much all binary formats. The Kaitai specification starts with the meta section. This will set the little endian byte order as default. The SEQ section is a sequence of attributes. The, the attribute name is in the IV key. The type U4 means that num files will be an unsigned 4-byte integer. We can define our own types in the type section. A field can be repeated, so in this case, files will be a list of elements of type file. In the instances section, we can define attributes that start at an arbitrary byte position. We can also use a powerful expression language in many places. Another built-in type is a character string in a certain encoding. 
And if we omit the type and only specify the size, the result is a byte array. Serialization for Java and Python was created thanks to the financial support of the NLNet Foundation. There are basically two use cases of serialization. You can edit an existing file or create a new file from scratch. The serialization support in Kaita friendly expa greatly expands the use of all written format specifications because now you can use them not only for parsing but also for serialization. Serialization can be used, for example, to convert one format into another. Kaita can help a lot with this. It will be discussed on the next slide. Another interesting use would be for fuzzing, which is about testing software with randomly generated inputs. Then, for example, video games modding and many other things. <coughs> A nice use of serialization in Kaitai is when converting data formats. Such projects are already being developed. Let's imagine that we have some kind of ecosystem. It can be a water environment, air or space. There are some sensors which me measure certain quantities. For example, temperature, another sensor can measure. Humidity, another light intensity. Some files will be created from, from these measurements. However, since each measuring device is from a different manufacturer, also these resulting binary files will be in different formats. But we need to convert them to a uniform format that our visualization software can work with. So Kaitai offers a possible solution in this case. The formats of the, of the individual measuring devices uh, we describe uh, in KSY specifications. Based on these specifications, the binary files are parsed and object trees are created in the selected programming language. These object trees are transformed into an object tree of the desired output format. This is usually the most challenging part. By serializing the, uh, the output object tree, we get, uh, the, we get the data from all sensors in a format that our visualization software can already work with. To ensure the correct functionality of, uh, of the generated parsers, uh, ar around 300 tests have been written, of which 60 have been newly added for serialization. A parsing test uh, consists of a binary file that will be parsed. Then there is the KSY specification, uh, which uh, from which the compiler generates parsers to all languages. All these parsers are run, and the parsing results are compared to the expected output for the given test. On the slide, you can see a small part of the of our CI dashboard. Uh, the the individual parsing or parsing targets or target languages are listed in the columns and the individual tests are in the rows. The cells of the table show the test results of uh, for for each language, either pass or failed. When I was adding serialization, I was thinking about how to test it so that existing parsing tests could be reused, ideally without major modifications. I came, up with, I came up with a method I call round trip. It consists of four phases. First, we parse the binary, uh, we parse the input binary file into an, uh, into an also according to the format specifications. We, this, this gives us an object tree uh, with the extracted values. This tree is serialized into a new binary stream in the second phase. 
this stream is parsed again into a new object tree in the third phase. The fourth phase is the, compar is the comparison of the data before the, uh, so is the comparison of the data used for serialization with the data after the round trip, which is the reparse data from serialized bytes. If serialization works correctly, these two object trees must be the same. This, this method seems to be a good choice so far. Uh, it, is, uh, it is a universal and yet simple method. It works perhaps surprisingly well, simply because if the writing is broken, then if the writing is broken, then uh, mm, the parsing <coughs> in the third, third step will read different values than what should have been written, which will be re revealed by this comparison. The Kaita project comes with, a s uh, with several visualization and dumping tools. They allow us to view the structured data parsed from an input file. The, this is useful for file inspection, for example, which, which is useful. So the, the file inspection is useful, for example, for forensic analysis, finding errors, debugging, and so on. The input of these visualizers is the KSY specification and the binary file of the given format. You can use the console visualizer that you see on the slide. There is also a command line tool, ksdump, also in the visualizer suite that, uh, <coughs> that uh, gives you the same parse data in JSON format. This, is, uh, this comes in handy for automation, for example. The most popular visualization tool is the Web IDE. You can find it on, the, on this address, ide.kitai.io. At the bottom right is, the, is a hex dump of the input binary file. In this case, it's the sample PNG file that we selected in the file tree on the left. At the, bot uh, at the top left is the KSY spec editor. According to the Kaitai specification, the input file is parsed, and the result is, uh, is the structured data that we see in the, in the object tree at the bottom left. If we change the KSY specification, the input file is automatically parsed again, and the object tree is updated. To make the installation of runtime libraries easier, we try to publish them in language-specific uh, package repositories. Languages that are packaged this way, uh, you can see on the slide. Other runtime libraries need to be installed directly from our GitHub repositories. The compiler is written in Scala, which is a language similar to Python. Uh, <laughs> uh, Scala, which is, a simil uh, which is a language similar to Kotlin. So like Kotlin, uh, Scala mainly targets Java Virtual Machine, therefore, uh, all, the, all versions of the desktop uh, Kaitai struct compiler are just jar archives uh, with Java bytecode. Scala can also, uh, but Scala can also be compiled into pure JavaScript. This, this is used, for example, in the web IDE, which runs entirely in your browser. We distribute the compiler or we package the compiler into three formats. Uh, the most popular is the universal zip archive, which works on all platforms without the need for installation. Uh, for Windows, there is an MSI installer. However, uh, both the zip archive and the MSI installer require you to install Java uh, yourself. 
for Debian and deriv derivative distributions, there is the dep package, uh, in which case uh, Java should be installed automatically if, if needed, because it's declared as a dependency. Another advantage of the dep package is that it creates an alias uh, KSC for you, so you don't have to type uh, kaitai dash struct dash compiler into your terminal. In addition, uh, kaitai, the kaitai compiler can also be installed via Homebrew. I guess this is useful mainly for Mac OS users, although it also works on Linux. Uh, with the, uh, the, the availability of the compiler in, um, in the package repositories of individual Linux distributions is not so good. As far as I know, it's only in void Linux packages, then in AUR, Ar Arch Linux user repository, and in uh, Nix packages. On Windows, there is also a possibility to install it via the winget tool. In the last part, I will mention some other binary analysis tools. Of course, I don't know all of them, but uh, I will mention some that I know and, and find interesting. The most extensive list of tools is maintained by um, German developer Dirk Loss. Uh, it's not complete, there are most, more of those tools. It's not even very well updated, some links don't work anymore, but uh, I don't think there is anything better. His list starts with parser generators and parsing frameworks, which are intended for creating parsers to be built into your application. The next section is uh, dedicated to hex editors with template support. Wireshark uh, has a special positions um, has a special position uh, among binary analysis tools. It's probably the most uh, it's probably the best network uh, traffic analyzer out there. The next group is uh, is a mix of other uh, other tools that didn't fit into any of the previous groups. The very first one, GNU Poke, is like an interactive debugger for binary formats, like GDV. The author is a Spanish programmer, Jose Marchesi, uh, and uh, he also, at, so at this year's FOSDEM, he was, the, he was the organizer of the Binary Tools Dev Room. And I also received an invite from, uh, on behalf of Kaite from him. Uh, at the FOSDEM conference, there was also a talk on the Radar 2 project, which, which is um, an extensive toolkit focused on reverse engineering. Kaite is integrated in Radar 2 as well. So going back to the to the beginning of these parsing frameworks. I don't know if it's the inten if if it's in uh, if it's a coincidence or or the author's intention that KT struct comes first, but that's totally fine with me. Uh, it's true that KT struct KT struct I think is unique uh, with the number of languages it supports, and it also has probably the most uh, most described formats in the in the format gallery and also in various open source projects. But of course, uh, other tools may be more appropriate in some situations than than Kite Extract. Open source is not a competitive environment. We at Kite support every new open source tool, and if anyone wants to create an integration with Kaitai, we are happy and try to support or help as much as we can. Uh, some <coughs> tools in this list have integration with Kaitai. Here it's Construct, a Python library for parsing and serialization, 
among the hex editors, uh, it's Qtai, which is a Qtai plugin for the hex editor Hue. The author is Tavis Ormandy, which who works at Google and is known for discovering serious vulnerabilities in, very, in all kinds of software, including Windows and recently also hardware. Uh, Hobbits also has a Qtai plugin. Uh, the author of Imhex works on a converter of Qtai specifications to Imhex templates. Also, some other tools not on this list uh, have integration with Kaitai. Uh, for example, the proprietary hex editor Neo. Another interesting tool not on this list uh, is FQ, but by Matthias Wodman. Matthias is a Swedish developer working for Spotify. Probably, uh, that's probably why uh, FQ is mainly focused on dealing with multimedia formats like MP4, FLAC, MP3, or JPEG. Uh, Matthias is also a maintainer of, F, uh, of JQ, which is mm, better known as, and uh, is a great tool for working with JSON data. Uh, at, the, at this year's FOSDEM, Matthias uh, had uh, a talk on FQ before me. We also met there, and in his talk, he mentioned that uh, his, his intention to create, uh, to add the ability to load KDA specs to FQ. He started working on it after FOSDEM. Another interesting tool I would like to mention is uh, Bank. Uh, binary analy uh, analysis next generation. Uh, the author is uh, Armin Hamel, and uh, uh, yes, and the, the and Bank is a framework for firmware analysis. It works similar to Binwalk. It can scan the entire contents of a, of a firmware file. It re recursively unpack all files it recognizes and then uh, classify them. It is used for determining the, the origin of individual files and uh, to also for security scanning, which means uh, checking for any known vulnerabilities or security risks associated with each file. So. Yeah, the, the author is Armin Hemel from, from the Netherlands, and uh, he described many, format, uh, many formats with Kaitai specifications, including those fi found in Asian devices like cameras and mobile phones. By the way, Armin is a nice guy. Uh, he supports Kaitai and my work. Uh, so binary formats can also, or binary format descriptions can also be made as works of art. For example, NG Albertini from Google uh, creates these uh, impressive color posters uh, showing uh, the structure of various binary formats. Also, in addition, NG also started writing KTA specifications uh, this year. We have come to the very end. What I would like to take away from this talk. Don't write parsers by hand, use a suitable binary tool. There are many to choose from and they will save you a lot of time. Thank you for listening and if you have any questions, please ask. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> so I think I'm, I'm not entirely sure, but I was reading, yeah, I, I was also interested in this, uh, in this thing, and I was reading some old discussions 
from, from Michael. So the author, the author of the project is Michael. So this is a question more, uh, more for him, but uh, I think he, he wrote that uh, because uh, it, Kaitai, Kaitai was created uh, from, so Kaitai started as an in-house tool in this, uh, in this startup and uh, they, so they had, they had like a team and they had a Japanese guy out there and yeah, and, uh, something like that. I don't remember, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was interested if you can use Katai also as a sort of a sniffer for an unknown binary format. Like you mentioned, there were uh, lots of specifications already in the community. Mm -hmm. 185, I think you mentioned. Yes. Can I use it to um, uh, throw in a binary file and use all those specifications to see if it's one of those 185 files? Uh huh. So I I think you can, but. Uh, yeah, so Kaitai struct doesn't uh, doesn't provide any means of doing it, but uh, it's not it's not that hard to to do this uh, yourself. And I think also the uh, the the bank project you can check it out. There is a link over there. It works uh, exactly like that. So it has a it has a bunch of KSY specifications of various formats. It has even more than than we we have um, in our format gallery, and uh, yeah, and, and it tries one <laughs> format and another, and until one matches. Yeah, so. Thank you. We need to end because mm -hmm. of time. Thank you very much. Big applause for Peter. <laughs> Small Thank present. you. Yeah.